it's flip season right now. Pero, pag-usapan muna natin ng mabilisan yung bagong budget phone ng Vivo, which is their Y28. Hey guys, it's your Tech Girl Mary and welcome back to our YouTube channel. So, before you get confused, this is the Y28 4G version. Actually, kasi dalawa yung Y28 ni 5G rin. Pero, hindi kasi ako sigurado kung ilalaunch yun dito sa Philippines. Pero, sure ako, yung 4G, oo. Before we do the quick unboxing, we all know that the Y series of Vivo is their budget offering. Sa pagkakaalala ko, Vivo Y100 yung huling pinag-usapan natin dito sa series nila. And, ang focus nun is yung fast charging capability niya. And, this time... Iba naman. This has a 6,000 milliamp hour of battery capacity from which I know ito yung pinaka malaki so far sa price point niya. And speaking of the price point, we actually got two variants for this device. We have a 128 gig of storage which retails for 7,999 pesos. And then yung isa naman that has a 256 gig of storage retails for 9,999 pesos. And they both got an 8 gig of RAM. Okay, so let's do a quick unboxing. Yung colorway that I have is yung gleaming orange, which is, I think, my first time to see on a phone. Actually, it's more beige than orange. Kung makikita nyo dito sa camera right now, it looks more of like a light brown. And then, of course, we also got the clear jelly case. Ito siya. It's the usual. We got quick guide and warranty card. A Vivo flash charge. And lastly, a USB-C to USB Type-A charging cable. In fairness naman, with this gleaming orange, they were able to make it really stand out. Kahit na wala masyadong pakulo, walang pag-glitter, actually, meron pala. <laughs> Every time that I will be tilting the phone, may glitter siya everywhere. Hindi ko siya masyadong napansin out of the box in the past few days. Hindi ko alam kung bakit, pero in fairness, it really is appealing. Yung pakulo ni Vivo dito is called Flowing Glitter Particle, which is not present doon sa isang colorway ng Y28, which is the green one. Anyway, yung color ng camera setup is also the same colorway that we got doon sa kanyang frame. And speaking of, everything is made of plastic. Actually, kung hindi kulay yung pagbabasihan natin, it really reminds me of an iPhone 12. At the same time, kasi medyo squared-ish din yung kanyang edges. Even though it's a glossy phone, in fairness, hindi rin siya dinidikitan ng fingerprint. Close-up detail pa niya, lalo na kung medyo intricate kayo when it comes to smartphone designs, meron siyang 3D diamond pattern on its camera setup. Aside from that, location ng usual buttons is still the same. Volume racker, fingerprint sensor, which is also a power button, is on the right side. And of course, the headphone jack, mic, speaker, and USB-C is below. Anyway, when it comes to its design, actually, wala akong masabi sa kanya. It is really modern and something you will see sa lineup ng smartphones this year 2024. Kasi bukod din sa performance, battery, display, I think isa rin sa mga deciding factors ng iilan, especially ng younger generation, yung overall look ng isang smartphone kahit magkano pa yan. Anyway, this is also 199 grams light and has an IP64 certification. So yep, this has a protection against dust and rain. To clear things, not waterproof but water resistant only. But still, for a budget device, that's not bad. Anyway, at the start of her video, I did mention that this has probably the biggest battery capacity sa price segment niya. At the same time, reliable din yung charging speed niya. Siyempre, it comes hand in hand. Minsan, may mga smartphones na may malaking battery capacity pero ang bagal sobra mag-charge dahil mabagal din yung charging technology na meron siya. To be specific, the fast charging speed is 44 watts and Vivo promised to get 100% from zero ng 85 minutes lang. And from our testing, it took us actually 92 minutes, which is more or less 7 minutes difference lang from what they promised. And 
not bad. Actually, parang apat na araw ko na yatang hawak ko yung device ng Vivo and up until the day I got it, hindi ko pa rin kailangang i-charge. To the point na I had to drain it myself dahil kailangan ko nang gawin yung charging test that I mentioned earlier. Now, for the chipset, I know ito yung pinaka-inaabangan nyo every time there is a review video here sa YouTube. This actually has a MediaTek Helio G85 with, again, an 8GB of RAM. The capacity is expandable up to 1TB of microSD card. I'll be honest, itong chipset na meron itong device ito is obviously not the strongest one you can get sa price point niya, lalo na yung merong 256GB of storage. It's a budget chipset, therefore, this will bring you budget gaming capabilities. So, yup, this may not be the most suitable smartphone for you, lalo na if high graphic intensive gamer ka. Anyway, while we were testing this device and gaming, we noticed na meron siyang dual speaker. The other one is located sa kanyang earpiece. Hindi siya sobrang lakas, pero enough naman. And probably not the best bass din na narinig ko sa isang budget phone. Pero ang importante, dual speaker siya at hindi bitin. Anyway, this also has an LCD display with a 90Hz refresh rate. And aside from this, according to the brand, this also has a high brightness display. And from which, I noticed hindi naman ganun kahay kasi medyo nabibitin talaga ako, even indoors. Right now, kung makapapansin nyo, almost max out na yung brightness niya pero parang ang dilim pa din. Anyway, aside from its battery capacity, I think what I also really like about this device is the camera setup. It has a 50 megapixels main cam and 2 megapixels bokeh camera. I know medyo unnecessary yung 2 megapixels bokeh camera from which sana nilagyan na lang nila ng ultra wide lens kahit 8 megapixels lang. But yeah, I focused kasi sa main cam and yung main camera niya in fairness kahit papano it gave me tolerable photos unlike yung ibang phones na nasa ganitong price point. Flash ko na lang yung iba pang photos after this clip. It's not a perfect phone. Hindi ito probably yung pinaka sulit, I would say, na smartphone for its price point. Pero kasi hindi naman natin pwedeng ipagkaila na may mga tao pa rin naghahanap ng phone na gusto yung may mas mataas na battery capacity na pasok sa budget nila. Anyway, personally, I still find the Vivo Y28 a decent device. I find the display okay. Kahit pa paano, clear and sharp pa rin indoors, pero outdoors medyo kulang lang talaga yung brightness. But overall, I think it has a potential, especially the 6,000 milliamp hour and IP rating. Anyway, how about you? What do you think of the new Vivo Y28? Let me know, guys, your thoughts in the comment section. Usap tayo. That's it. Again, it's your tech girl Mary, and see you in our next video. Bye.